Okay, I have to take a short break because I don't think I've ever talked so much in my life and I'm thirsty. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, welcome. My name is Christine. So today I'm here to bring you a Q&A. I had so many girls asking me the same questions in my DMs, so I figured I might as well put a video together. And I asked you guys on Instagram if you'd rather see a chatty get ready with me or a Q&A. And 80% of you guys wanted to see a Q&A, so um, that's what I'm doing for you guys today. Before we go ahead and get started, please make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the little notification bell. And let's go ahead and get into the video. So Rain Near Kramer on Instagram um, asked me why I started my YouTube and I kind of touched on it in my um, weekend Seattle vlog so I will link that up in the corner if you haven't seen that yet but pretty much uh, the gist of it is when Brad and I had a falling out we took a small break and it was just a time for me to kind of like learn about myself and build myself up as a person and I was working three different jobs at the time and we ended up getting back together around like July, August and I think at that time I had two jobs and then when like November, December came around I had one job and I finally um, let that go and I was just like a free agent just like not doing anything and taking a break because like as soon as I graduated UW I went to the University of Washington. I graduated early in March so Ever since I graduated, I went straight into having jobs and I feel like I didn't really have a break. So when like November, December rolled around, I figured like this was a good time for me and like I, I wasn't working any jobs at the time. So I just took like a month or two off, um, flew to LA for a couple weeks and just kind of laid back and like enjoyed myself and enjoyed having like all this free time. and. While I was doing that, um, the new year kind of rolled around and I was like, whoa, what the heck? It's it's a new year. I don't have any obligations or anything like tying me down or things that I like need to do right away at this moment. So I figured I'd been wanting to do YouTube for so many years now. Things kind of just fell into place where I had that opportunity and I had plenty of time on my hands and I had a good camera and I have editing skills. So. I just sat down, filmed my first video, and that's when it everything got started. So when I first started out, I didn't have very many followers, and I think on Instagram, I probably had like 4,000. I was always under the impression that you need to have like a big following in order to start a YouTube, but actually Mariana Hewitt, she had a blog with me Instagram where she gives like tips to bloggers and so back when she was like updating all the time I asked her a question on there. I asked her if she thought it was necessary to have a big Instagram following before um, starting a YouTube and she said it's not necessary at all. It's pretty different audiences but the way YouTube works it's way easier to gain subscribers than it is Instagram followers. I kind of was inspired by that. I know plenty of people that have like tens of thousands of followers on YouTube but not as big of a following on Instagram so Sometimes it doesn't really carry over and I found that with my YouTube I grew to like 3,000 subscribers in the seven months that I was doing it and it's it's crazy to me now because people are starting to find my Instagram from my YouTube and um, not so much from Instagram to YouTube anymore. If you're consistent and you make good content, you're honest about why you're doing it, you're not doing it to make money. If it's truly because you have a passion, people will see that and like you for who you are and what you're doing and that's how you can build a bigger following on YouTube. Going off of that, a girl asked me how I gained subscribers on YouTube. It mainly started for me when you have like a big viral video and that's kind of the thing that like attracts a lot of people to your channel and you don't just you can't just have a viral video you have to be having consistent good content every single week because that's what people will see when they see your viral video and they click on your profile and they see that you're posting like once or twice a week and you're posting like consistently good things that's when they'll hit subscribe like you don't just need to have a viral video because if you don't create good content or they see that the last thing you posted was six months ago, they might not be as likely to hit subscribe. I didn't really make videos like wanting to have a viral video. I wasn't doing anything crazy. I was doing videos that I wanted to make and seeing input that my audience was giving me to see like what they wanted to see as well. And if you're consistently making videos, every single week since I started I upload a video. Even if it was like a crazy week for me, I might upload like a day or two late. But it's super important to be consistent so your audience like expects a certain thing from you and you're always pushing out good content. 
If you find that your videos are like dropping views, maybe try switching it up and do a different type of video. Um, I've heard that you can do Google AdWords um, to boost the views on your videos, but that's not something that I've ever done. There's tons of videos out there that are super helpful. And um, a lot of it is you want to be able to create videos that people are searching. Like use wording in your titles and your description box that are highly searched and that way your videos come up more easily. There's a ton of videos on that. I'm not the pro so do some research. And another girl asked me how I started getting so much PR. I feel like I'm like a micro influencer on Instagram. I have, I just hit 6,500 followers. I'm not as big as like the other more well-known influencers out there but I do get about two to three packages like every two to three days. And there was a time when I had a week that I was getting like like three to four packages almost every single day. One thing that I did was I reached out to brands myself and um, the worst thing that they, they can do is say no so you just have to like word it in a way that's respectful and it's not like I was expecting anything. I, I would just send a message and say hey I'm a beauty blogger. I also have a YouTube channel and I specialize excuse me? I specialize in doing like makeup and skincare. Um, would you be interested in collabing or collaborating? The important thing too is you have to be creating good content on your Instagram because when brands go to your page and they see that you're creating good content and you're posting photos and videos that they feel that you could do for them. Um, they have to be able to see like benefits in working with you because a lot of brands don't really want to be giving out products like willy-nilly. So for me, I, I always focus on posting good pictures. I never posted something just to post um, and that helped when I reached out to brands. A lot of the times they would say yes, sometimes they didn't respond and then other times they would say, hey, we're not looking for influencers at at the moment. So the first big collab I ever did was Mario Badescu. I mean what? Ula Henriksen and they sent me the Sea Rush cream and when I first got that thing I was so excited and what you have to do when you get that first collab especially with a big brand is you have to kill it. And what I mean by that is like I posted a picture on Instagram. I mentioned it in two of my videos. I made mini Instagram videos um, using that product and tagging them always. It started building a relationship and they actually reposted one of my pictures um, holding their product and from that repost alone I gained like a couple hundred followers. The edge that micro influencers have over bigger influencers is we have more time. I didn't get as much mail as some of the other influencers had so I was able to focus more time on the smaller amount of items that I got. Say I used a new product that I got in the mail on YouTube. I would send them via email and say, hey, I actually use your products in my email. Let me know, like, hope you enjoy or something like that. Just to let them know that you posted using their product. And if I posted, like, a picture on Instagram and they didn't, like, see it yet, you could always send the link via email too and say, hey, I posted a photo using your products. And it's not in a way that's, like, annoying. Like, you don't want to be annoying about it. You just kind of, like, let them know if you feel that it's a good post that they could repost on their page. Um, then a lot of the times they will appreciate that you sent them something that they might have missed. I could just go off on that um, for hours, but there's so many videos that you can look up on YouTube, like tips on how to get reposted and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, Sydney Parker, one of my good friends, asked me what is my favorite type of video to make. And for Instagram, I love doing skincare videos. I love taking off my makeup and patting on my moisturizers and my eye creams and doing face masks. I actually didn't have good skin in high school, so it's fun to be able to play with that stuff, like having good skin. And I actually have been having like a little bit of breakouts. Um, people ask me like, when I try new things, if I break out from it, I totally do. And it's important to have like a base, base routine. And I'm planning on doing a nighttime skincare routine for you guys soon. I'm just trying out so many different things that I want to try everything out first and then come up with a routine that has like the best of the best products of the stuff that I've tried. So that will be coming out soon. But anyways, what I was saying was I just love doing skincare videos. Um, on Instagram and on YouTube. I love filming haul videos. I love doing like try on videos. I think they're so fun to edit. That and lookbooks are so much fun for me to edit because I, I love to edit videos. Like if I could just have someone like film for me and like do my makeup and all I had to do was like pat on my skincare and edit videos, I would be so happy. And the next question is what motivates you the most? And 
The biggest thing for me is I love seeing progress and it's exciting for me when I get a new email for a new collaboration or like a huge thing for me was when Ula Henriksen launched a new product. They didn't say anything to me. It was their Pore Plunge Mask. It's that green, it's a green bottle but inside it's like a smurfy blue mask. They hadn't said anything to me and they had just launched that product and I saw it all over social media and all over their Instagram page and I checked my mail and I got a box that said Ula Henriksen on it to Christine and opened right away so I was like what, what is this and I opened it up and it was that poor plunge mask and for me being such like a small blogger to be noticed by someone like Ula Henriksen that's carried by Sephora um, was like so big for me. Seeing little like achievements like that kind of gives me, I almost said hives, but that's not the right word. It gets me so happy and excited and every time I get a new package from another brand and I open it up, it's, an, it's another opportunity to get me reposted and create content that I can put on my page that other companies could see and notice. Now I'm to a point where like I'm able to charge rates um, for certain things and I don't do anything for free that I don't like. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's nice and like I just got an email earlier today. I posted on my story and I was literally crying. Pharmacy, uh, they're carried by um, Sephora and they're famous for their like green clean makeup melting balm. They sent me an email and said that they would like to, to invite me to an event in LA and I was so excited, I called Brandon and I said, guess what, I just got invited to my first event, but it's in LA, like I'm so, I'm so sad I can't make it. And so I had to DM them back and said, I'm located in Seattle, I'm not, I'm not able to make it. I was pretty bummed that I couldn't make it. And they responded back and said, no, we actually wanna fly you out. And as soon as I saw that DM, I called Brandon right away and I told him the news and I started crying. Like it wasn't even like I had tears, I was like sobbing because I was so excited, so happy and things like that. It's like small steps of progress that really motivate me to keep going and it makes me want to be better. Like that's the first event I've ever been invited to in the first place and to have them say that they want to fly me out is so humbling and it makes me feel so good about myself. I just love doing social media. Being an influencer is like one of the best jobs that you could ever have, especially if you love to create content for the sake of creating content. Like I don't really do it to make money. It was kind of like a for fun thing for me. It's kind of fun to have a lot of Instagram followers and get a lot of likes, but it's nice to be able to turn it into a business and be being able to get skincare products and clothing and all that kind of stuff um, for free. So, sorry, that this is going to be a long video. What do you do when you're feeling down and how do you pick yourself back up again and move forward? So, for me, um, when I first started my YouTube, I knew some girls that were on YouTube that were slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at first, starting out, it was just discouraging for me to be putting in so much work and to see other girls out there make it big and for me to kind of just like slowly be growing that made me think at the time when I first started like what am I missing what am I doing that I can't grow like that there are times where I felt so discouraged that I was like oh I have to film another video I have to edit another video trust me once I hit 1,000 subscribers I think I hit 1,000 subscribers in like June um, once you hit that first landmark and it gives you such a high, it makes you want to be better and start like hitting the next checkpoint. Like the next checkpoint for me was hitting like 2000 and then 3000 and it just becomes easier and easier. For me, what motivated me is just focusing on these small victories and not really focusing so much on the numbers. And if you're making good content, your subscribers and your views will follow. So you just have to be really patient and don't try to cheat the system by paying for a ton of views. Like you don't need to put all that money into it. If you are patient and consistent and putting out good content, all that kind of stuff will come. So for me, it was just kind of realizing that and having the patience and like trusting that all that stuff will come. As far as like daily life, not really like a negative person. I, I kind of view myself as a pretty positive person. So. There aren't very many times in life when I feel like discouraged or like sad about my life and if I ever did it's kind of nice to have Brandon and like good friends of mine that I can just vent to and then I also go to the gym a lot so all that kind of stuff kind of helps me to like push out the negative energy. I listen to a lot of podcasts and like reading good quotes that help to uplift you. And my sister asked me when did I start doing makeup and I was ugly until like 10th grade of high school but it started with mascara and I think I started using mascara in like ninth grade and that was the only thing I ever used. I had like super thin, I had unshaped thin brows and it was just like, I don't know why anyone let me 
go out in public like that. And then I started putting on highlighter on and then it went on to bronzer. The only thing I wasn't using yet was foundation or concealer. I would use like spot concealer, um, but I hadn't learned the concept of like highlighting my under eyes and all that stuff. By the end of high school, I was just like watching so many different videos. I feel like I wasn't really taking any of it in. I was just kind of watching it for entertainment. I feel like I didn't start to really focus on it until like one or two years ago when I started gaining like a little bit of momentum on my Instagram and I was like well it's kind of fun to look really good and that's when I started picking up on my makeup game. And some girl asked me what I use on my body and I love to use Hemp's Lotion. I have like three backups and I just finished my bottle um, but I will put a picture of it here and Hemp's Lotion is just, it smells so good and it leaves my body so moisturized. I also use um, body scrubs. I put so much time into my skincare and makeup that like hair and body and all the other stuff I don't really like focus on. So as far as like my body, I just use like any kind of scrub at like Ulta. I really like the Body Blends Coffee Scrub. I like that one and Brooklyn Botany has a good avocado scrub that I like. And I've had times too that I'll take sunscreen because I learned this from somewhere that if you spray sunscreen like on the on the highlights of your body it'll have like a flashback so it'll make you look super shiny and smooth and glowy so that's also another trick that I use but like anything else in my body you don't really like do anything else too complex how did I decide on doing real estate as a career and is it what I had imagined so when I graduated UW, actually before I even graduated, I had been interested in doing computer engineering slash computer science and I just hadn't really decided yet. So I actually had an internship at John L. Scott down in the IT department and I stayed down there for about six months and then they had a receptionist that was going on vacation and they need someone to fill for her. So I guess the IT guys recommended me because I had good like person skills or whatever. But I was front desk up there in the main office where all the real estate agents and brokers were. And I would just see all the people coming in and out all the time. They're loving their lives. They're constantly on the phone. They're busy, always dressed up in these nice outfits and the girls were in heels and their hair was done. And it was kind of just like this glam job that I never really like pictured as being that glamorous. The office was in Bellevue. So that was like the top producing office in Washington State for John O. Scott and just seeing those agents be so successful and like loving their job and seeing how like done up all the ladies were and me like loving fashion and makeup I kind of saw that and I was like wow that seems like kind of a fun job I would love to do that one of the guys in the corporate office he was an older gentleman but he had said to me um, you would make a great broker and I think it kind of just like stuck in my head for the next like three or four years and um, after my internship, I went back to school and then the next summer I had another year left and I went back to that same office and I asked if I can be an intern for an agent and kind of be her assistant and shadow her. So I was linked up with one of the top producing agents in the nation. She was really good, high producing, like always busy and very successful. And I shadowed her for um, that whole summer and I learned a ton of things from her and after that internship I, that was when I kind of decided I think I want to be a real estate agent and I was still going to school at the time I was studying um, entrepreneurship which is like business and also global health and I was just kind of finishing that um, I had strayed from the computer science path um, just because I didn't really see it as something that I wanted to do anymore So I was still kind of picking like what I wanted to do But after that internship that was when I decided okay, I want to do real estate like for me I always thought it was this glamorous job It is once you get established and some people think that real estate is so easy and it's an easy way to make money da, 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 da. But you have to have a really big customer base and be able to talk to people and go out there and like show even though you're a new agent that you have the abilities to do what they need you to do it's not what I originally thought it was but it is really fun for me it is something that I want to do for the rest of my life yeah another question that I got is how do you manage your time with side hustles and all your jobs and with friends I don't know I've always liked being busy and I can't stand being bored I hate when people sit around and watch TV and play games all day and they're always talking about how they're bored like that is just something that I will never be and I've always loved having multiple jobs and going to school and always having a job at the same time and I just like to be busy and um, it's easy for me to have lots of things going on and 
Sometimes it is stressful. Like for me, if you don't know, I, in addition to doing real estate, I also dog sit on rover.com and that's like a dog sitting website. If you're interested, I'll put my link down below for um, where you can sign up. And on there, I've been able to watch a lot of dogs and you can host dogs at your own house, which is what I like to do. And that's why I always have a different dog in my house. And for me, it's just really fun, like being able to have that side hustle and at the same time, it is really stressful. When I get home, I don't really have time to just like goof around and watch movies or TV. Um, as soon as I get home, I'm on my phone editing photos for Instagram that I'm gonna be posting later in the week or I'm editing a video or responding to emails or doing something for real estate. So what I would recommend is maybe have a planner. When I first started out doing Rover, I started working on my YouTube a lot and I also had real estate. I set up a planner and wrote out the big things that I had to do. Like if I had big collabs coming up, I would write Ula Henriksen on one day, pharmacy on another day, and just set up days where you get content taken, especially if you want to be an influencer, you need to be having good content all the time. So I would set up like a day or two during the week where I'd go out with Brandon or some of my girlfriends and have them take photos of me and just rack up a ton of content that I would have for the next week or two. I will pre-film a lot of videos just in case I don't have time to film a video another week. And it's just being able to manage your time. You have to be really dedicated. You have to be really disciplined and just know that sometimes you have to say no to things. If you have a vision of where you want to be, um, there's not a lot of things that you will allow to distract you. I want to be established as a YouTuber and be an influencer. And I'm actually moving to LA at the end of the year um, as soon as I have um, all my real estate stuff finished off. In two to five years, I ideally want to be married, buy our own home, and I've heard so many podcasts. Gary Vee says a lot, um, eat shit for two years, eat caviar for the rest of your life. Something about that just really spoke to me. Like you need to have dedication in the first few years of your life and work yourself to death and just be motivated and have your end goal in mind and once you do there's not very many things that can distract you it's it's hard for me to sit down and watch three movies in a day i just feel like it's such a waste of time and there's so many things that i want to achieve so many things that i want to do and you just can't be successful and like desire to be the best and then sit at home and waste your life away you know so going back with managing time it just helps to have a goal in mind what you want to do um, be disciplined and like if there are things that are too distracting for you like there are times where I have to force myself to put my phone down and it's hard for me because I've gotten even more attached to my phone um, and there will be times where I don't get out of bed until 11 a.m. because I'm on my phone and I need to be better about that, but you just have to be disciplined and cut off things that are distracting to you, like TV and movies. I don't really watch any of those anymore. You just have to be disciplined and know what you want and what you want to achieve. And it helps me to have like friends and Brandon to support me in those goals and to help keep me motivated because they have similar goals that they want to achieve as well. And the next question is, what would be some advice you would give to your younger self? And I briefly mentioned it on my Instagram stories, but as a younger gal in high school, I feel like I didn't have very much confidence and I was really insecure and I was what you would call a girl hater. And I always, I just viewed everything as a competition. Like I would always look at a girl and be like, I'm way prettier than she is or she's way prettier than I am. Things don't have to be a competition and if I were to go back and give advice to my younger self, I would say that there's so many more benefits that come out of being a girl supporter and supporting other people in their goals and dreams. And it doesn't bring your goals and dreams down by supporting other people's. So many people have the misconception that by helping other people, they are putting themselves in a lower place or they are lessening their opportunities and stuff like that, but that's not the case at all. And there's so many good things that come out of supporting other people and supporting other girls. And that's one thing that I have learned now is by supporting other bloggers and influencers and girls that I like, um, then everyone is supporting each other and we can all grow together. Also back then, I feel like I kind of took a lot of shit and I, I only, Barely talked about it on Instagram because I had like a long page written out, but didn't have a good group of girlfriends. I feel like I kind of just hung out with like whoever wanted to hang out with me. Um, but you can't surround yourself with toxic people if they are always gossiping and talking crap about people. Those people are not good for you. So 
you need to surround yourself with like good people loving people and even if it means that you're in like a group of friends that are all dorks who cares in five to ten years after that all those people that are out there talking shit and all that stuff will not be in as good of a place in their life as you will be if you're hanging out with good people that support you and uplift you and build you up so it's super important to have a good group of friends um i didn't do drugs in high school or weed or anything and i didn't start drinking until after high school so i've always been a goody goody and um it helps to have a good group of friends with you and just to be like an open person and love everyone like regardless of their situation what they have to offer because it doesn't harm you by doing that by being loving so Victoria Lee, my sister, asked who is your favorite sister? I would have to say Joe. Both of my siblings, I'm blessed to have them. My sister is so goofy. She is always liking and commenting on my videos on YouTube and every time she comes over to visit, she's like, what's the next video that you're gonna do? What are you filming next? And it's so cute because I feel like she looks up to me a lot and it's just really cute to have siblings that are so loving and supportive like that. So. I'm lucky to have them. I also did my brother's makeup. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put it up in the corner. And another video where my sister judged my um, hoe outfits um, and my clubbing dresses. So I'll also put that in the corner. But anyways, I'm blessed to have supportive siblings. I know you guys are watching this, so thank you. Okay, someone asked me how you and your mans met and started dating. And I, I've been wanting to do a video with him. And maybe when we both move to LA, we'll do a video. We'll either do like a Q&A or boyfriend does my makeup or something like that. If you're interested, let me know down in the comments. I briefed on it on Instagram and he messaged me on Facebook, said that he thought I was cute. And I responded back and I was like, hey, I think you're really cute too. And then we set up a time to hang out and we watched a movie. First time we hung out and from there we were texting, calling each other every single day, FaceTiming. You know how it goes. From then on, it was like we were inside and we went through a couple bumps along the road but eventually we started officially dating I think about six to seven months after our first like hangout and since then we're nearing I think we just hit three and a half years and we're nearing four years soon um, so yeah I'm really grateful to have such like a great human being in my life and he's gonna be the person that I marry so. and what is your favorite makeup product do you prefer to buy high-end versus drugstore I use ABH uh, brow pomade in my eyebrows and that's always something that I will always repurchase I did do a video on like 10 top 10 items I can't live without so if you're interested in seeing that I'll link it up in the corner but as far as like drugstore and low drugstore and high-end I have been buying drugstore products for the longest time when I was in middle school and high school like I didn't have that much money so I bought a lot of drugstore products and I found that a lot of the products worked just as good or even better than high-end products so I didn't really get into the high-end realm until like this year and for me it depends I feel like concealer and foundation will almost always be better from high-end products and like Maybelline Fit Me and my Wet n Wild and my LA Girl foundation will always be like amazing products that I will keep in my collection always but um, like concealers like I love this Too Faced Born This Way concealer my shape tape high-end concealers just are always have always been better for me and that in like setting powders um, but as far as a preference, I've always been a drugstore girl. I would have to say I'm more of a drugstore girl just because of how long that I've been using drugstore products and so much of the stuff in my collection and the stuff that I use every single day are drugstore. And there are things that I appreciate from high end and things that I, like I said, will prefer over drugstore items, but I've always been a drugstore girl and... So anyways, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I know it is a long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have more questions, uh, let me know down in the comments below. DM me on Instagram. I always will try my best to respond to DMs and answer your questions. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below what you thought, what you would like to see next. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.